Hi, this is Tim Just, the 8020TD, T-H-E, 80-20TD.com. Let's look at some very useful tips and tricks here that I like to use with WinTD that makes your life a lot more effective and easy as an 8020TD. Number one, we have the open section, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to Reports, and we're going to print a wall chart that's detailed. Now, you won't be able to see the printout, obviously. Uh, I guess we could go... You can also change the printer font here, by the way. What we're going to do is click on Print the Wall Chart. And your choices are pretty simple. You're going to get a traditional wall chart with the little boxes and, and uh, what color the player played, who their opponent was, won loss scores, buys, etc. You can sort this any way you want. Those sorts prove very useful. By the way, you might want to experiment with the abbreviated single line wall chart. Some people like that a lot. I like to sort by score. Players like to see themselves in their score group, and they like to predict what their pairings are going to be the next round after they see who's won and who's lost. It's very useful to you as a TD because you can check this before you make your pairings with WinTD and see if WinTD's pairings match the ones you've done by hand from the wall chart. You might want to make some switches. Also very, very useful is the rounds to show, in this case five. Why is that useful? Even though there's no information in there about white, black, etc. for future rounds, there is information about who has a buy, who doesn't have a buy, and players can quickly check and see if you've got that information correct. Next, update ratings. Get your list of players. Here they are. What you're going to find is that uh, sometimes you've entered these players before the supplement, which we've showed you how to use in another video, is available. You can still enter them, and what you do after you've shown them all is go to Players, Update from USCF Supplement. Now let's see what we have here. See, we have a 2225, a 2400, a 2009. 2172. Let's update the entire list. Yes, regular ratings. By the way, if you're doing a quick chess tournament, this is the only way to make sure those quick chess ratings are entered. Uh, you would click quick chess here, and all of the ratings would become quick chess ratings. It's updating the rating supplements right now. There's an error for one player, but we want to update anyway. Let's look. Oh, look, the 2400 changed to a 2392. This fellow changed to a 2253. You can see that some of the ratings have indeed changed. We also have a couple other things that you can work on here. Notice how this player and this player don't have their names written and typed out and keyboarded the way the other players do. Their last names are all in caps. That happens sometimes in the entry process. And it happens if you've imported the information from another source. That's another video. Highlight the players who don't have the names in the format you like. Go to Players. Convert their case. Pretty slick, huh? Look at that. There's also something else you can do. This player right here lost his first round game, and he wants to re-enter. He wants to give you more money to re-enter, or he just wants to re-enter and start again in round two with a half point by round one. And when he does that, you really don't want him to play the same player he's played when he paid his first entry fee. Highlight the name, go to players, and re-enter the tournament. Let's see, he's coming from the open section, it says up here, and he's going to go back into the open section. Why do you have other choices here? Sometimes you have a three-day schedule and two-day schedule, and they restart the tournament on a different schedule. Okay. Same section, yes. Notice how he this player is now re-entered with an RE behind their name. That's so you know this is the new player 
that paid a new entry fee. And what WinTD has done is it will make sure that this player does not play anyone that the former player, the one with the same name that paid an entry fee and already played round one, has already played. This becomes exceptionally important if you end up merging the two-day and three-day schedule so that they all have to play each other in perhaps the last two rounds. Merging is a topic we'll look at in another video. Alright, there's one last thing that I think that's kind of important that you might want to look at. Open section, here's all the players. This screen isn't the way I want it to look. I can go to edit, I can change layout. By the way, if you're going to post something to the internet, don't forget to check the apply to all windows, and you might even find that useful all the time. Whatever you do here will apply to the windows for all your sections. Let's bring this screen down so you can read it. We've looked at this before. Get the things off the screen you don't want, put the things on the screen you do want. If you're going to post this on the internet, and maybe even if you're not, I like to have the rounds add it to my current screen. Helps me find by players among other things. You can sort any way you want and the most useful thing is to show here you can show inactive players. Yeah, that's the players you've withdrawn. You can post that list so in case there's an error of any kind or somebody wonders what happened to their friend they can find that out. Let's look at the non-members in this section, okay? Oh, look at we have three players out of all those who are non-members. We're going to have to talk to them about how they want to take care of their membership. Well, you pretty much know everything you need to know to run yourself a fine little tournament using WinTD. Thanks a lot, and watch for our Beyond the Basics series coming up soon.